function that L'Hopital's rule tells us is, is really what the function is doing as it approaches a point. So here's an example. Let's look at the limit as x goes to zero from the right of the natural log of x divided by x. So you, you might be thinking, ah, oh, limits. I thought we were sort of done with limits. Um, certainly not. Uh, limits are going to follow us through the course. Um, but our perspective here is a little different um, in that we're interested in, in what is the function doing, right? So the idea here is that certainly if I think of this as my function f, if I plug in x equals zero, it's undefined, right? So I know the function doesn't actually exist there. If it existed there, then I, I wouldn't really need to know much else, right? I know what value it is. So the question is really, what is the function doing as it gets close to zero? And this is pretty important to us because the function doesn't exist at zero, but there's lots of ways it could not exist, right? I mean, it could be going to positive infinity. It could be going to minus infinity. It could be going to some fixed value, but just stopping there and never getting there. I, I don't know how excuse me, I don't know how it fails to exist. And so L'Hopital's rule is a strategy for figuring that out. Now, some limits we already know how to find and those same strategies are gonna work for us in the future. But notice here, and, and I guess one of those strategies was to see what's happening to both the top and the bottom when you have a fraction, right? The bottom is certainly going to zero. Natural log of X, um, Let's just make a little note over here. This is going to be very useful for us throughout this whole section is to remember what the natural log of x looks like and also what e to the x look like, right? So these are functions we kind of should be, should be familiar with, but maybe not, right? So just remember these. This will help me figure out what these limits are because they're going to pop up quite a bit. So as x goes to zero from the right, natural log of x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, and it's going to minus infinity. Okay. So in this case, there's a little bit of a question like, okay, what's really happening to this function? Um, and it turns out that we can figure this out, this one out numerically. So um, notice x is going to zero, but it's going through positive values. So when you have the bottom going to zero, that has the effect of kind of making the, the fraction larger and larger. And the top is getting larger and larger and larger, but negative. So this combination of minus infinity over zero, I actually know what that looks like that's telling me that this function is heading towards minus infinity. Okay. So if the bottom is going to zero and the top is growing without bound, then the combination is going to minus infinity. So that tells me, you know, my function overall is going this direction. Okay. So let's see another situation here. What about the limit? as x goes to zero from the right, or just x goes to zero of sine of x divided by x. So we could try the same strategy. As x goes to zero, sine of x is zero, and as x goes to zero, x certainly goes, so what does that tell us? Do you remember what that's called? When the top and bottom are both going to zero, this is called an indeterminate form. You beat me to it in the chat, perhaps. Yes, exactly. Indeterminate. That's better typing than what I've got here, right? I got distracted. Indeterminate. 
And, and that means we don't know. And so in the past, what we did is we had some other strategies. We maybe factored or we added fractions or we used the conjugate. We used some algebra to sort of rearrange this and, and magically that, that common factor, that common zero would drop out and I'd be able to figure out what's going on. That's not possible here in this um, sine x over x. Um, it's, it's really unclear what that is doing. Um, if you watched all the lectures, you may have seen me do this proof um, back maybe a month ago, month and a half ago even. Um, but it, it turned out to be a pretty complicated proof. It was like the squeeze theorem and um, it was a really hard limit to figure out. So we want, we want something better here, and L'Hopital's rule is what's going to help us in this situation. So L'Hopital's rule says, given the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x, if the limit of f of x equals zero, I ran out of room there, which is also the limit of g of x. So it's, all this is saying is just if both f and g are going to zero or the limit of f of x is going to plus or minus infinity, which is also the limit of g of x. So the, there's two, kind of two sort of different situations where L'Hopital's rule is going to work. Either both are going to zero or both are going to some form of infinity. They can be, one can be positive and one can be negative or both positive or both negative, that's okay. As long as they're both going to an infinite value or both going to zero, then The limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. And intuitively, this one is a little tricky on why that would work. We know the function values and the derivative are not always the same thing. But it turns out if there's sort of, if both the functions are going to zero, what matters is really how fast they're going to zero. Like if they're both kind of going at the same speed, then they, they will equal a value. If one's going much faster than the other, then it may equal zero or, or infinite values. So that's not a, a proof by any means, but a little bit of an explanation on why this rule might work. I want you to be very clear that we're not taking the derivative of the whole function. If I were to do that, I would have to use the quotient rule and it'd be the low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And that's not at all what this is. Um, this is only when we're evaluating limits. Um, the limit of a, of a quotient like this is the limit of its derivatives as as long as the functions satisfy one of these two conditions, right? Either they're both zero or they're both infinite. So this one here fits that scenario, right? Both the top and the bottom function are going to zero. So if I were to evaluate that one, what I would like to see or show is that both the top and the bottom are going to zero. So then I say it's equal and I put a little H here that's just handy because it's saying, well, it's really just saying I'm using L'Hopital's rule. So rather than working with sine X over X, which was indeterminate, I can work with their derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of X is one. And now with this new limit, I just start over and I say, well, maybe this is going to give me what I want. When I put in zero, I get one over one and that's one. Okay. And it is true that that is the limit. So 
So L'Hopital's rule is, is very nice and it's a good way for dealing with these indeterminate forms. Um, the, the previous methods we had certainly work in special situations, but L'Hopital's rule will work in, in kind of all of those situations plus a lot of other ones um, that we would have struggled with otherwise. Um, for example, we have the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x minus 2. So this is one we would have seen way back in the beginning of the course. If I put in 2 here, I get 4 minus 12, I'm sorry, 4 minus 6 plus 2, which is 0, and x minus 2, which is also 0. So L'Hopital's rule applies because it's indeterminate. And I can take these derivatives, 2x minus 3 over 1. And when I put in 2, I get 4 minus 3, which is 1 over 1. If you had done it back in the beginning of the course, we didn't know anything about derivatives, um, but we learned to factor, or we knew how to factor, but we applied factoring to this problem. If you factor it, you would have gotten x minus 2, x minus 1 over x minus 2, and you would have canceled the x minus 2s, which would have given you x minus 1, and the limit of x minus 1 as x goes to 2 is, of course, also equal to 1. So it gives us the same result either way, but it's a, a slightly different method. And again, it, it works in a lot of other situations. Um, questions so far? Any questions? Okay. Let me give you a couple more examples then here. Let's try the limit. Um, The limit as x goes to 0 is a good one. Yeah, I think so. 2 sine x minus the sine of 2x all over x minus sine of x. So when we have a limit like this, the first thing we try is, is direct substitution to see what happens. Remember, sometimes we can figure it out directly. We don't always need L'Hopital's rule. Um, but when I put in zero here, I get sine of zero, which is zero, sine of zero, which is zero. So the whole top is zero. And zero minus zero, that's also zero there, right? So this says, I don't know what it is, so I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, we've got to be careful with our derivatives, of course, as always. The derivative of the bottom is going to be 1 minus cosine of x. The derivative of the top is going to be 2 cosine of x minus cosine of 2x times 2, right, from the chain rule, right? The derivative of, of sine of 2x is cosine of 2x times 2. So now, again, we try L'Hopital's rule. So I put in x equals 0, and I'm going to get 
2, cosine of 0 is 1, so I get 2 minus 2 on the top, so that's going to 0, and on the bottom I get 1 minus 1, which is also 0. Well, I don't know if it's just because the book and, and math teachers like to be clever or not, but um, this is very common in these L'Hopital rule questions. Um, and I, there's no reason that we can't keep going. This is, a, this is a limit, and this limit also goes to 0 over 0. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule again and see what I get. Now, there are certain functions where we could get stuck in a loop and, and never get out. But this function, it feels like things are sort of improving or, get, or changing in a way that, that I might emerge. So derivative of 2 cosine is going to be minus 2 sine. Here, I'm going to get another negative. So it's going to be plus 4 sine of 2x, right? The derivative of cosine of 2x is minus sine 2x times 2, right? And that extra 2 gives me the 4 here. And the derivative of the bottom is then going to be sine x. Well, we can see again, if I put in 0 here, everything is going to go to 0 again. And we may start doubting ourselves a little bit. Is it, is it worth going on? Right? But but it is, and, and I can see that partly because I'm imagining the bottom now, when I take the derivative of sine x, I'm going to get just cosine of x, which is no longer 0. That's equal to 1. So that makes me feel like, okay, maybe, right, as, remember, these are all limits. Maybe I've made some improvements here in a way that this limit may actually exist. This is going to be minus 2 cosine of x. This will be plus, I'll get another 2, so it'll be 8 cosine of 2x. And here, when I plug in 0, I'm going to get minus 2 plus 8, so that's going to be 6 over 1. And I feel a great sense of relief, right, because it did, it did work out and stop and, and left me at 6. Um, this was uh, one, two, three rounds. That's kind of a lot. Two is very common. You might have to go once and then go once more. And, and some of them go three or four. Um, but beyond that, it's kind of hard to make them, make them fit together for that long. Questions? Any questions on that one? Let's try, you can also use L'Hopital's rule with limits at infinity. So it's okay to have the bottom go to infinity, but the conditions are still the same. Either the, um, the top or the bottom have to both be going to zero or both be going to an infinite value. And let's try, Let's try x over the natural log of x. So x is certainly going to infinity, and natural log of x is going to infinity as well, right? Remember our picture, the natural log function goes up, and it, it goes slowly, but it keeps on going up. So this is L'Hopital's rule. I need it because I don't know. I don't know what infinity over infinity is going to give me. It could give me 0, it could give me infinity, it could give me 17, it could give me any number right? or not exist. So it's very much indeterminate. The derivative of the top is 1. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. I'm going to simplify that to just x. Right, dividing by 1 over x is the same as multiplying by x over 1. And this one is x goes to infinity. x certainly goes to infinity. Right, So that's um, a, a L'Hopital's rule with an infinite limit. And that's fine. That happens. Right, It doesn't always go to a number for us. Uh, 
Um, let's try. The limit as X goes to minus infinity of X times E to the X. So this is a little bit of a new situation um, because it's not a quotient like the other ones. Um, certainly x is going to minus infinity. e to the x, remember, looks like this. So as x goes to minus infinity, e to the x is going to zero. Well, this product is also, it turns out, indeterminate. Um, because you have something that's getting really big and something that's getting really small and you multiply them together, what happens? Who knows, right? It, it, it's hard to tell. It's indeterminate because they're sort of doing opposite things, right? If one was going to zero and the other was going to zero, well, you multiply them together, the whole thing's going to zero, right? No, no debate there. But when you have them doing opposite things like this and then multiplying them, it's not clear how that's going to shake out. Um, so this is what's called an indeterminate product. Um, but it turns out we can change this into a quotient so that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And here's how we do that. It's just a little algebra. I'm going to take this function and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom and write it as 1 over e to the x. I can certainly simplify that and write that as e to the minus x. But in general, you have to write it as one over that function. So algebraically, these are exactly the same, right? I just multiplied by the reciprocal, right? Or divided by the reciprocal. But when I look at it this way, now the top function is going to minus infinity still, but this is one over something getting close to zero. So this circled function that's now in the denominator is also going to an infinite value. So this version, I can apply L'Hopital's rule to. Notice this function is different. This function is not e to the x anymore. It's 1 over e to the x, which is a different kind of function. And I have to look at it as that whole thing. Um, so when I do L'Hopital's rule, I'm taking the derivative of that function, whatever um, 1 over the function. This is, in this case, it is certainly easier to write that as e to the minus x for derivatives, right? Then I don't have to use the quotient rule. But that's not always possible, right? If this were x squared minus 17, I, I have to keep it as 1 over x squared minus 17 when I do its derivative. So the derivative of e to the minus x is going to be e to the minus x times the derivative of minus x, which is minus 1. And I would probably just simplify that because I don't love negative exponents. And as x goes to 0, sorry, I changed that, right? x is going to minus infinity. I don't get to change my limit there. Minus infinity. As x goes to minus infinity, e to the x is going to 0. Minus 0 is still 0. It turns out that when you have an indeterminate product, it doesn't matter which of the functions you flip around. Um, so I flipped e to the x, and it certainly made this problem better than flipping 1 over x, but um, they would have both given us an indeterminate form. The problem is flipping the 1 over x would have sort of made everything worse as I kept taking derivatives. Like you'd get stuck in that, that loop where you don't solve anything and then you just start taking more and more derivatives. I'll, I can show you that just to illustrate it. Um, if I had flipped the other way, this 
this is going to zero, and then one over x as x goes to infinity, whether it's positive or negative, is going to zero. So it's a different sort of version, but it's still L'Hopital's rule. These are both zero. So everything is fine right now. Take the derivative of the top and the bottom. This is x to the minus 1, so its derivative is minus x to the minus 2. And I end up with negative x squared e to the x. It turns out, right, this piece is still going to minus inf or infinity, and this piece is still going to 0. So I still have an indeterminate form, and it's even worse than where I started, right? Rather than having just x e to the x, now I have x squared e to the x. And if I did that again, I'd, I'd keep moving in the wrong direction. So um, it does, I guess I shouldn't have said it doesn't matter which one we flip. It definitely does matter, but they are both options, right? You don't always have to flip the one that's going to zero. You can also flip the one that's going to an infinite value. So an indeterminate product is where you have something infinite times something going to zero. And you're going to rewrite that as, right, you're either going to bring the zero function down and write it as one over, or you're going to bring the infinite function down and write that as one over. Obviously, not really zero and infinity, right? Those are stand-ins for um, some specific function, right? That's either going to zero or an infinite value. If it's not this, if it's not infinity times zero, then it's not, not indeterminate, meaning you can figure it out. So if one piece is going to infinity and one piece is going to five, well, then the product is going to infinity, right? Because you're, you're multiplying something bigger and bigger and bigger by a, a fixed number, right? Not in determinate form. If you try to use L'Hopital's rule on something that's not indeterminate, it will, it, well, not always, but it, it very likely will give you the wrong answer. So you need to make sure that you're only using it um, when you have an indeterminate form. So we have the two different types of indeterminate quotients. And then we also have this indeterminate product form that we can deal with. Any, any questions on these examples? It's definitely more, uh, direct and straightforward than what we um, talked about on Tuesday, right? There was sort of a lot of big ideas floating around on Tuesday with 4.3. This is, this is more surgical, right? It's confined to just this, the smaller, um, smaller kind of question, right? What is the limit of a particular function?